Welcome to Chuck Builds. You're about to be watching my method two on how to install Home Assistant onto a PC. This is not my preferred method because it would require you to purchase an adapter or additional SATA cable for the hard drive from your host PC. If you already have those tools and you're comfortable getting inside of your PC, absolutely continue on. But know that this is the cut down version of a longer form explanation that will be uploaded on my channel. The longer version is called the complete version of how to install Home Assistant and I explain everything. The video you're about to watch has been cut from that video and chopped down to be as quick and straightforward as possible. I don't really explain why I'm doing the things I'm doing and if you're seeking that out, please check out my channel for these other videos. Let's dive in and we'll do it real quick. Now there's gonna be two ways that we can do this. That requires some additional hardware and some additional know-how, but you might need an adapter such as a SATA to USB adapter if you have a hard drive or SSD, or if you have an NVMe hard drive, you might need a portable USB-C NVMe enclosure. Um, I'm gonna get to that later. Now everything in this video I'll be covering is pretty much written up word for word in the Home Assistant guide. And I'll also have a quick write up with my screenshots and, and stuff that I used on my website if you wanna follow along. Regardless of what method you're gonna to use to install Home Assistant, you're gonna to have to make some BIOS changes. So I'm gonna turn on this computer. I'll be pressing F2 as it turns on, as that's the key I need to press for my Dell to get into the BIOS. If you don't know what key to press, you could also try escape F1, F2, or the delete key as it's turning on, kind of spam those as it's turning on and you might get into BIOS that way or you could Google and see what key it is for you. Home Assistant only requires two changes here, but I'm gonna recommend a few others as well. Those two changes are gonna be UEFI boot mode and secure boot. We wanna make sure secure boot is off. We wanna ensure the UEFI boot mode is on. The best way to do it is just to work through all of your settings, take a quick glance, read them all, and this is a great chance to make sure that your system has everything you're expecting. We're making sure that our UEFI boot mode is enabled. We're making sure that our secure boot is disabled. We'll double check that we have multiple cores enabled. We'll have all the Intel features such as speed step and turbo boost enabled. We'll have chosen our AC recovery or power recovery option and we'll have gone through and blocked the sleep as well. So now we've done all that, we'll come through and we'll click apply to save it and then we'll come to exit and that's just gonna restart the computer. So next up for method two, we're going to first download the Home Assistant image and then a tool called Rufus to our computer. It's an alternative to Belina Etcher. We will use the Rufus tool on our computer to write Home Assistant directly onto the SSD or hard drive of our target host and then we'll reattach that SSD to our host and then just boot up. Um, we're gonna first get inside of your PC and get to the hard drive. We're gonna identify our SSD, which is right here. And then I'm just going to push these tabs in, push it to the side and unplug it. And this is where I'll be taking over to my PC, but first I need to get it outside of this hard drive tray and it's toolless. So I'll just kind of bend it and get it out. And then I'll be taking my adapter plugging it in, and then I'll be taking this and plugging it into my computer. Quick note, if you are not using a SATA SSD or hard drive, this is a SATA connector here, you're probably gonna be using an NVMe or a SATA SSD, and you can get a little adapter like this too. Um, this is what I'd recommend for Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi, uh, just cause the Raspberry Pi SD card doesn't hold up. So that's in the side. Uh, not very expensive. I'll have links to all of this in the description with an Amazon affiliate link where I'll get a small commission if you purchase it through my link. You don't have to. Let's go flash this. All right, so we have the SSD connected to my computer via USB with that adapter. So next up, we're going to open our internet browser and go back to the Home Assistant website, getting started, installation, x86-64, and then we'll scroll down to the image and we're gonna download the image. And the other tool, I'm gonna switch it up instead of using Belina Etcher like they recommend and we used earlier. I'm gonna use one that's called Rufus. We'll go ahead and run this. Rufus has popped up. Right away, it shows the correct disk and it's gonna ask us to select an image. So we'll click select, come over to our downloads folder and select HAOS generic 64. We really don't have any other options for settings here. So we'll just click start and it warns us it's gonna wipe the drive, and that's okay. So Rufus has finished writing to the drive, so we'll close this, and we'll go put it back in the mini PC. With the SSD that we just flashed Home Assistant onto, I'm going to reinsert it to this caddy. 
line up my guides here and then I'm just gonna push it closed, get a good snap, make sure everything's tight and connected. And this is ready to start up and it'll boot right into Home Assistant. So I've just plugged in the mini PC after reinserting the SSD. Um, it's booting straight up into Home Assistant, which is great because we've already made our BIOS changes earlier in this video to enable UEFI boot mode and disabled secure boot. So it's gonna run on its own and turn on. Now that Home Assistant has connected to the internet, we have an IP address seen in our interface for WLP2S0. And if you type that IPv4 address for the interface, the 192 number into your internet browser's address bar, followed by colon H one two three, you will be taken to your Home Assistant page. And this is how you actually interface with Home Assistant itself. You can get the app on your phone and you can do it through a web browser. So that is everything for this video. I'm kind of shocked I had to remake it so soon. I hope I get this cut up just right. If you need support, please leave a comment on the YouTube video and I'll get to you. If you want more support, it's gonna be more of a conversation instead of just like a single thing. Come to my YouTube channel and click on the links and click here to join on the Discord and in the Discord, I can chat more easily with you. I can join a voice call, we can screen share, we can get it figured out, and I'll do the best I can to help you. Now, I hope this was helpful. I hope this was lay enough in terms that you weren't lost or confused. If you were, please let me know in the comments and I'll try and clear it up for you. Home Assistant is awesome. I'm a really big fan. I've got a bunch of videos on my channel about it. I actually have a playlist called Home Assistant. If you're not sure what to do next, check out the first boot into Home Assistant video and I'll kind of walk through all the screens and buttons and what they mean. And then I have other videos that are more specific and I hope that you'll subscribe to check those out when those come out. My first video for how to install Home Assistant was by far my most popular video, and I'm hoping lightning strikes twice, but if there's any reason you need help with this, please reach out and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching.